Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Michael Parker, and welcome back to Black Box. I wish I had good news to deliver, but I do not. What we're going to talk about in this episode is, in my opinion, easily the scariest, most immediate subject that we could talk about in regards to Los Angeles and to the state of California and possibly to national security. Now, while this may sound like hyperbole, hear me out. Los Angeles, this city that offered such great promise to so many, a city of movie stars and swimming pools, rock stars, celebrities, athletes, the glamorous. Within it, there is a great rot. Downtown and throughout our great city, the homeless situation has gotten very, very bad. And this has increased at a massive rate in the last several years. And a byproduct of that is the subject of what we're going to discuss tonight. And it is this giant rodent rat infestation that we have in Los Angeles. It would be comical if it were not so tragic. If Los Angeles did not look like something out of a 1970s horror action flick with Charlton Heston in the Omega Man or something like that, it would be funny. But it's not. The second decade of the 21st century in the second largest city in the United States, in the Great West, in the great state of California, and we are buckling under what can only be described as a catastrophe. And it is a catastrophe of poor city management, lack of vision, and it comes down to essentially a breakdown and a dissolution of anything even remotely resembling modern civilization. What we're going to talk about tonight, perhaps you've heard about it, perhaps you have not. But in the last couple of weeks, this has become a bigger and bigger story. And some people have been reporting on this for several years. But in the last several weeks, it is really, and especially the last two weeks, this story is really reaching a critical point, which thank God it is, because it takes things like this to wake people up to situations. Now, whether our local city government and state government will respond in any meaningful way remains to be seen. Rats. We've got a lot of rats in Los Angeles. Did you know that Orkin, the famous exterminators, they do an annual report of the most infested cities in the United States? And the most recent one, which was September 15th of 2017 to September 15th to 2018th, ranked Los Angeles as the number two most rat-infested city in the United States. Number one was Chicago. Number three was New York. Number four, Washington, D.C. Number five, San Francisco. Six, Detroit. Seven, Philadelphia. Eight, Cleveland. Nine, Baltimore. Ten, Denver. Los Angeles has more rats than New York City but less than Chicago. So there's that. But Robert Corrigan, who holds a doctorate in urban rodentology from Purdue University, I'll bet you didn't know that existed, has said that urban rat populations have increased 50 to 20% globally over the last several years. As more and more people live in urban centers, one can only think that the byproducts of humanity will become even more appetizing for our equally adept fellow mammals, the rats. And these rats carry fleas. These fleas carry diseases. Typhus, salmonella. There's even talk of bubonic plague. Are you kidding me? Bubonic plague, the Black Death. A year or so ago, the Swedish heavy metal band Ghost put out a concept record having to do with rats and the Black Plague and things like that and dancing into the ashes of civilization. And at this point, they seem almost prophetic. Because here we are in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, in a state with the tech elite and the film and the entertainment industry with all of the money that they can create, the fifth largest economy supposedly in the world the most taxed state in the U.S., a place where 
a gallon of gasoline costs about a dollar sixty more than it does in most places because we are taxed so heavily. And today, as I record this, there is another small election that will be very poorly attended or or, or utilized in which they're asking for more money. Yet they don't use the money that we give them in any kind of meaningful, prudent way. So let's get back to these rats. Let's just talk a little bit about rats. And when you start looking into rats in general, the information it kind of varies on how many rats a typical rat can have in a year. But even on the conservative end, what you soon find out is that two rats can have a gigantic amount of offspring in a very short time. A mother rat can typically have, typically have 12 babies in a litter, 10 to 14, some somewhere in there. She can have sometimes a litter per month, sometimes more, sometimes less. But let's say for the sake of keeping this simple, let's say she has 12 litters in a year, 12 apiece, that's 144. Now, 144 babies, two months later, they can have babies. And then two months after that, the grandbabies can have babies. And so you can see how this grows in an exponential form. I have seen numbers. Now, I don't know if I can believe this. I certainly could see it, I guess, in the extreme exception every now and then. But regardless, even if it's half this, it's still ridiculous. Given those exponential numbers, a, a single rat couple could produce tens of thousands of descendants in a single year. Now, that seems extreme. And like I say, some of the information I was finding online, you know, goes up and down in regards to how many litters and, you know, baby mice slash rats they can have in a year. But regardless, what you're seeing is an exponential, ferocious growth of rats. So we have a mammal that's highly adaptive, quite intelligent for its small size, and in a place, Los Angeles, with a mild climate, where we have a great deal of trash, human waste, byproducts of all sorts being dumped from the homeless, but also negligent business owners into the streets that sometimes sit there for weeks. The amount of homeless that we have in Los Angeles right now is astounding. I have been here since the early 90s, and when I first moved here, I was taken aback coming from the place that I came from in the amount of homelessness that I saw. And probably in the last 7 to 10 years, it skyrocketed. There was an article today in which some of the city government people were saying that they're stunned by this sudden growth in homelessness. Come on, man. (laughs) You're not stunned. You're trying to cover your ass. Anybody who is not blind, who simply drives around for five minutes, can tell you that we have a very severe human tragedy happening in the city of Los Angeles in regards to homeless. A new report that some of those within city government are saying that they are, quote, stunned by how many homeless we have in Los Angeles. It looks like, as best as we can count, there are nearly 59,000 homeless people across the county of Los Angeles. Most of those, 36,000, being in the city of Los Angeles. This is a 12% increase over just the past year. Where did these people come from? 12%. Where did they come from? Now, I don't want you to think that I or anyone else lacks compassion or empathy for this human tragedy. Quite the opposite. I think that it's been allowed to get worse and worse. Most of these people within city and state government are only concerned about being elected. They are not taking care of their own districts, precincts, or what or states. The Gavin Newsom's of the world, the Maxine Waters of the world, 
the Kamala Harris's, the Adam Schiff's, spending all of their time grandstanding about the great perils of Donald Trump. Meanwhile, their state and their cities are under siege from this great human and now biological disaster. Back to the rats. When I was a kid and I saw Repo Man and I saw what at that point in the 80s was Los Angeles downtown depicted, I couldn't imagine that people had fires on sidewalks. That just seemed like a, a crazy idea. Well, the depiction in that film is <laughs> completely tame compared to what you will see now. I think there's 50 some odd city blocks in downtown that are filled with people living in tents. I don't know where they got these tents. In many cases, I'm thinking that the city has given these people tents. Regardless, they're living on the streets. They live in a spot until they're moved along to another spot and then another spot and then so on. And they are living oftentimes in the trash amongst them. Now, many in city government were saying, let's not blame the homeless. They are not the only ones doing that dumping. And that is true. A lot of dumping is done by folks that have small businesses who don't want to pay the increased sanitation charges. So what do they do? They go to streets that are already littered and completely unlivable and look like some third world nation on its worst day. And they push things out of the back of their truck onto the ground and they drive off. Well, this creates this ideal situation for the growth of not only bacteria, germs, God knows what else, but these feisty little rats. In Los Angeles, one of our most common rats is called the Norway rat. On one hand, you have to hand it to the rats. Their sheer will to survive and adaptability is admirable. What's amazing about some of these rats, I <sighs> blows my mind, their teeth grow at just the, way, the same way that they have offspring. Their teeth grow very quickly. People will often wonder, why do rats gnaw so much? And seriously, you guys, when I read this stuff, I can't even believe it. But it has been said that the incisor teeth of some rats can grow, get this, four to six inches a year. So rats, rodents, what they do to counteract this, they gnaw, which keeps their teeth down to a manageable amount. So these small animals with these super fast metabolisms having offspring at explosive rates, <laughs> teeth that grow four to six inches. It's like, it is. It's like a science fiction movie. It's, it's like something you can't even believe. And so what that means is that, you know, they're going to eat all these various items that are left out. They can gnaw. I have, I, it's said that they can even gnaw into asphalt, blacktop, to get to things that are below the street. So they ruin infrastructure. And here's where it gets crazy as if it weren't already crazy enough. Now we're at this point where we're wondering, okay, so what are we going to do about the rats? We've got the rats. What are we going to do? Well, there are some people that don't want us using rodenticides. And rodenticides are toxic concoctions that kill rats and, and rodents. Oftentimes, this causes their blood to not coagulate correctly. They bleed to death. The problem with that is some say that this is leading to the deaths of other animals who then consume these rats. And one of the things they point at, and I, I love animals of all types, so I'm not trying to make light of this. Here in California, we have mountain lions and P-22, one of the most famous. And it's said that P-22 died a few years ago. You know, he ingested some of these rats with these toxic concoctions in them and it killed the cat. So it's also killed hawks, falcons, you know, other types of animals that would feast on, on these rats. 
And then there are those who oppose that because, you know, this is not a green solution. Even though the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Pesticide Regulation already regulate these substances, there are people that still oppose them. And there is a gentleman by the name of Assemblyman Richard Bloom. He is a Democrat from Santa Monica. He has a bill to ban rodenticides, rodent poisons. We are on the verge of what even Dr. Drew Pinsky, who I know is not some raging right winger or alarmist that I can tell, has been on the news the last couple of weeks saying almost in the same words that I was thinking, I couldn't believe when he said it, he used the word medieval. Ladies and gentlemen, this looks like the Middle or Dark Ages where great cities of Europe were overrun by rats in the rotting state bringing on the bubonic plague and people died in numbers. So he's claiming that's what we are living in right now. And I absolutely believe it. We had typhus outbreaks earlier last year. We're going to have them again this summer, he says. We've got rat infestations at City Hall. We have one L.A. police department um, that has been written up for just being completely unsanitary. We have police officers who've bitten, been bitten by fleas and are becoming ill. This is incredible. And yet, people are saying that we shouldn't use these rodenticides. I am not anti-animal. I don't want to kill any animals. But at the same time, this is now a public health hazard and has to be dealt with in a drastic measure. So this AB 1788 that Assemblyman Richard Bloom has brought up I just think it's counterproductive to the overall health of our state. And I would argue that something that is a risk to our city is a risk to our nation and potentially global. Okay, so we get a couple of people sick with something like typhoid fever or typhus or salmonella or hepatitis or, God forbid, bubonic plague. They hop a plane from LAX or Burbank to somewhere else and then on and on. I mean— This sounds, I know, like a complete science fiction film, dystopian thing. But unfortunately, this is what happens when people care more about the careers than the communities that they are supposed to be serving. And they let things get out of control. Their priorities are being on television talking about orange man bad or whatever utter insanity is going through their heads. Meanwhile, their city is crumbling. They can't manage the money that you give them. They want more. They don't take care of the situations that are right in front of them in their own backyard. Now, the only upside that I could see to all of this is because it's finally gotten so bad. And this uptick, no pun intended, in news coverage about potential epidemics sweeping Los Angeles. And listen, I would say that San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle... They're only inches from this as well. Don't you remember the yaps that you had to have to not step in human feces as you walk the streets of San Francisco? Don't you remember a a year or two or three ago when they were power washing all of the streets and sidewalks of San Diego because of hepatitis? Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a collapse of humanity. We are in a collapse of human decency. Meanwhile, our leaders fiddle. I'm not trying to scare you. If anything, I'm trying to get you mad. I'm trying to get you to be active. I'm trying to get you to think realistically, not in some feel-good, crystal-rubbing, hippie utopia, but to think literally, this is where we live. This is what we have. This is the 21st century. There are no do-overs. It will come to your house. In Venice a couple of months ago, there were stories how... Liberals were having to question their ideologies, especially amongst the Silicon Beach. I I don't really care for that term, but that's kind of what they call it. In Venice, where many of the tech newly well-to-do are living. And there is a huge homeless population in Venice, just like there is all over L.A. They're in my neighborhood. They're blocks away. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But they are now getting up in these people's yards. And they are defecating in their yards. They're vandalizing their homes and cars. They are using smartphones. They are reading uh, neighborhood apps to see who's reporting them 
and then defacing their cars. In my particular neighborhood, about two blocks from me, there is an embankment across the street from one family that I know. Great family, two young daughters, and a homeless man built a little camp across the street from their house. The father or mother, I'm not sure which one, confronted the man and asked him to move on because they have young daughters. And this man started threatening them, you know, threatening violence. They then tell one of my other neighbors who then tells me, and they're very concerned. So we are all encouraged to call the police because the police told them that the only way that these kind of things, that they're able to do anything is if many people complain, which blew my mind. Why is it that a family with a home and young daughters in the house has to have their neighbors all complain along with them in order to get anything done about a situation? There is an overpass very near my house where homeless people live. They get moved off. They come back. They move off. They come back. They move off. My daughter, when she gets off the metro from coming home from her high school, She's afraid to walk by them. Perhaps they're harmless. Perhaps they're just regular people. But she's a young, a young girl, and she's afraid of them. And I don't live in a particularly horrible neighborhood. Not the best, not the worst. It's, but <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, this is out of control. The homelessness in this city, the drug addiction, the mental health the feces, the hypodermic needles, the trash, now these rodents. There's always been all of these in the past, but it has suddenly skyrocketed. And this is real, folks. I told my wife the other day that we need to make sure that all of our animals are up on their flea meds, because here's what's going to happen. Somebody was saying, oh, well, we've got the answer, so here's what we do. We just bring a bunch of cats downtown, right? And they're going to kill all these rats. Ladies and gentlemen, that's complete bullshit. Because I'll tell you why. I'm pro-cat, by the way. I love cats. But here's the deal. Those cats, the fleas are going to jump on them as well. And we are already finding animals in shelters with these same fleas that are carrying these same diseases as the rats. So even if they're killing some of the rats or running some of the rats off, the rats are producing at such a high rate, plus the, the, the fleas are still there. That's not the answer. And we already have a feral cat situation in Los Angeles. So we've already got a lot of cats and we've got a lot of rats. <laughs> I mean, it'll, you know, there's a David Bowie album where he says rats the size of cats. I think it was Diamond Dogs. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this is just it boggles the mind that California, the state of California, the city of Los Angeles, these shining beacons of the past are now being allowed to just devolve into a free-for-all. The rich could sit on the hills or in their high offices in downtown and come on television and talk about what shoulda, woulda, coulda. They're stunned. You know, how could these things have gotten this bad? We're trying to do what we can, but we can't make a real statement right now. Check in with us at a public venue that we'll be speaking at. I mean, this is complete bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. This is just complete fucking bullshit. Now, when the homeless move in on their street or they're, or they're on their yard, then they'll get upset. You know, <laughs> I don't mean to sound so pissed off, but I am pissed off. I drove to downtown two weekends ago to go to an, an art exhibit that I wanted to see. And I got off on this particular off-ramp. And, and I've been here for 20 years. And that day, when I took that off-ramp, heading towards downtown, kind of down close to uh, where the Lakers play, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I thought I was in some completely underdeveloped, war-torn, poverty-stricken third world country. But no, this was downtown Los Angeles. And I thought to myself, you know what? I feel very sorry for these people. And I know that we have the abilities to work on this. So why are we not working on it? What's the deal? And I thought, you know what? When people come to visit this city, when they come to visit Los Angeles from all over the world... They come for a Lakers game, or they come to go to Disneyland, or they come to see Hollywood, or whatever it is. This is what they see. This is what they're going to see. This is a reflection on our city. This is a reflection on our state. This is a reflection on us, and this is a reflection on the people that lead us. 
they're going to stop coming. And I don't blame them a bit. California has long been the butt of jokes. Well, right now we kind of deserve it. And it's tragic. People are going to become very ill. Many already are. Police officers, people in City Hall. Drew Pinsky, like I said, I always liked the guy, I, but I had never seen him get this freaked out by anything on television. And he, he took the words right out of my mouth. The things that were going through my mind, he said, he used the word medieval. This is medieval. This is 2019. <laughs> and we are looking at conditions that we should have overcome decades ago. Interestingly enough, 2020 is the year of the rat. I hope it's the year of the human. I love you all. Take care of each other. Speak your mind. Vote when you can. Think twice about things. Don't be beholden to ideology just because your friends are doing it. Think things through from top to bottom. What are the real reasons that things are happening? How can they be happening? Let's not forget our humanity at the sake of being mad about something. Let's think logically. Let's think about helping, helping each other. And let's call out the people who are not delivering. Gavin Newsom, I'm, I'm looking at you. Garcetti, I'm looking at you. Maxine Waters, I'm looking at you. Kamala Harris, I'm looking at you. Let's fix this. I'm Michael Parker. This is Black Box. Let's light this place up and make it a better city, a better state, and a better world. Good night. Postscript. This morning as I awaken, have my coffee, look over the continued fallout from this new report that shows that Los Angeles County had an increase of 12% over last year to 59,000 people homeless and how stunned our city fathers and government are. Now I'm seeing another report that claims that Ventura County homelessness has jumped 28% in 2019 compared to last year. This is a statewide dumpster fire. A count that was released on Tuesday shows that the San Gabriel Valley jumped 17% in, from 2018 to this year, which is the second largest jump in Los Angeles County. The largest was the west side. All of you folks living on the west side, guess what? you had the biggest percentage increase, 19%. And my personal view is probably that these numbers are conservative. Our governor, Gruesome Newsom, had this to say, quote, in some ways, those L.A. numbers were modest compared to other parts of the state. That's what he said in Sacramento on Tuesday. Well, I don't know what planet he's living on. I don't know what state he's living in. But this is out of control. This is unacceptable. And drastic measures are going to have to be taken. And you know why? Because we're playing from behind, way behind. City and state government has been lackadaisical, grandstanding buffoons for far too long and let, and let a human tragedy occur. Now we see a situation where people living in the streets, surrounded by trash, surrounded by rodents carrying diseases, are normal. It's not normal. This has to end. Spending additional money in creating affordable housing is only a portion of the answer. The deeper, more complex issue here is that we have huge populations of people with severe mental illness and substance abuse problems. That is not as easy to fix. However, we are in the 21st century, and we should be able to. I'm Michael Parker. This is Black Box. We're out.